you know what? I am not able to hear you. You are muted. Now? Yeah, I can. All right. How's it going? Good. Good. How's it going for you? All right. Um So is this abstract in scope for this meeting? I don't think so. Okay. I was thinking we could, uh, so Sage has this, uh, had this idea this morning that uh, after Cephalocon, this uh, etherpad got created. Okay. Which, uh, so the idea is to improve the onboarding experience kind of in line uh, with what we were discussing. And uh, I think Lens uh, put together this uh, etherpad kind of uh, trying to integrate or like put down in one place what all we have currently. And uh, some of it may or may not make sense anymore and some might need updation. Uh, but there's definitely things that need to be grouped together in the right places for people to be able to access it. And I was thinking maybe um, we could identify those uh, groups, like one would be, if, if, if I just start lower, maybe I should just share my screen or something so that getting recorded might help. Okay, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? I cannot hear you again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was muted. I can see your screen. Okay. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, so the resources here, firstly, are is a website. And currently, if we look at the website, a lot of information here is there, but probably not in the right um order or in a more you know human easily readable way i would say like it says get involved and then you have this but i mean we could definitely add stuff here which could just have like this the video that we were talking about what is safe and like why you would want to get involved in it and what does it actually do could probably be something that we could have here and then based on those slides or the the stuff that we discuss in that video uh we could have these sections like if you how you can get uh, become a part of the community if you want to like go and uh, participate in the developer monthly and stuff like that could then make more sense uh instead of just like rather having it here is one idea that came to my mind so you're saying that um, you're saying just put everything on one page? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that before you say get involved and like, uh, uh -huh. I'm just saying uh, have that one small video that talks about uh, or like, you know, the maybe like a five minute thing that talks about what what does it mean to even get involved mm -hmm. right and what are the avenues in which you can you can become a developer you can become a doc writer mm -hmm. you can just become a community member and you can just become uh, like a silent uh, uh, listener or yeah. you can just come come and give your ideas and you don't need to code so there are different class classes of of uh, contributing or getting involved uh, that i see uh, and all of this, like the community, self development, and contribute, like these fall in separate buckets. Mm -hmm. So just, just so that people can clearly identify themselves into one or more of these buckets, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. going to be useful to have that uh, five-minute introduction. Is what I feel. I think that's a good idea. And then people can, people. It's like more people would click on and watch like a, a video that's a few minutes long. Then yep. 
try and like read if we tried to explain it. <laughs> All right. All right. I mean, like just five minutes explaining, okay, this is what we do. This is how we do it. We write code. And if you want to contribute, and then, you know, the, the, the person who's actually doing the video mm -hmm. or like it could just be like a, not even a person talking it could just be like some slides and some voiceover for those slides mm -hmm. and uh, then it might just become easier uh, to relate uh, and I identify easily this is what what I, f I felt is lacking in this at least getting involved here I think that's I think that's a pretty good idea um, yeah because it, yeah, you're you're right. It's like it's not very obvious on the website that there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, yeah, so. you kind of have to like know what you want to do before, like when you go to the website. Yeah. And to jot down points here. If we can do that, I think uh, in this category, we have other things like contribute community. They all fall under this getting uh, involved. They would suddenly start making more uh, more sense then. In fact, this is also, there is a safe community calendar that has been integrated into it, which I'm looking at. Um, well, I think the, uh, our website can use more work. I'm pretty sure there are lots of things that have gotten removed slash added. Yeah, I didn't even know this page existed, I think. Um, so that is one thing, and the I mean uh, this I believe gets maintained well the community page because of our safe days and the set of events and stuff. Um, but the other thing that I'm uh, thinking is um, so all of this kind of falls into improving the website and adding more details into the website. Then there is the doc, the docs part of it, the docs.cef.com part of it. How can we also um, add something like getting involved directly into like docs.cef.com? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Um... Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it could be almost the same content, or we could just like yeah. point, point to the. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the, uh, I'm, I think it's going to be, this one is going to be probably a little more detailed because the website, the way you have to, re, you know, the layout is and stuff. Uh, you might not be able to uh, stuff in a lot of information there, but all the uh, technically this should be a superset and that should be a subset of of um, of all the information. So having like so this one, if you look at it, it just starts with contributing to Ceph, and then there are a bunch of things here. Mm -hmm. We directly jump into uh, introduction, which is probably let's see what it is and essentials and everything. Yeah, I feel like maybe we should try and, yeah, like if we're going to try and build a superset, mm -hmm. then it might be worthwhile trying to figure out, like, not everybody needs to, 
follow the same path through the documentation. Like, um, like not everybody needs to see it, everything, I guess. And so I guess I'm trying to think, like, I wonder if there are classes of users. Like, we could say, are you, you know, it's like, if you're interested in learning how Ceph works and you want to contribute to the dashboard, mm -hmm. like that's totally different than exactly than mm -hmm. if you're like I want to change something in Blue Store, or right. like, you know, and um, uh, yeah, it, it seems like we might be able to have like kind of a choose your own adventure page. For getting involved, yeah. yeah I th yeah. I mean, it's it maybe like maybe ninety percent of the data is already on the page, and we just need to like re maybe like reorganize it or something. Uh, yeah, the, I I I agree. I agree. That's kind of what we <clears throat> should be doing. I think there's a lot of information already there, and we need to structure it in a way that makes sense and uh, also uh, aligns with the getting involved bit of it. When you say it aligns to getting involved, do you mean so that it's like the it's current, like okay, I mean, uh, like it's, current... it's 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 as simple as saying that uh, you have you have this links which says getting involved, and then you have these subsections say getting involved in the dashboard or getting involved at the in the like the the OSD code or in RGW. So these these directories or these documentations are already there, uh, well structured. Uh, in in our docs directory, right? If we could just find a way to like have this link, which could say, okay, uh, below getting involved, getting involved in, you have these sub bullets, which will redirect you to these right pages, where you can start looking at stuff uh, or what all is there in each of those components that you might be interested in. Yeah, that that makes sense. that answers my question. That makes sense. Okay, so I guess we should say uh, structure docs from line. Does that make sense? You're again muted. I was I was just reading it. Um, yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe um, for structure docs, Seth dot com. Like just so we remember what we were talking about, we could we could note like the. Do you want to start getting, editing? Yeah, I just I don't know what the actual length is link is, but like. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, okay. Um, oh, I think it's called contributing. Or, I mean, the URL is still probably wrong. Uh, but. I don't know what it's called here. That's all right. I think that's enough to remember. Okay. Uh, and in the process, we can just remove stuff that's not relevant anymore. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff that needs to go out. Uh, so that kind of covers the web website bit of it. And these readmes are, um, these kind of fall into, uh, I guess that this is kind of a good, like getting started page should actually have these readmes. Uh, yeah, 
I think these all make sense and there should probably be a, if there isn't a, an existing one, there should be a docs.ceph.com slash contributing to Ceph and all these readme should actually go there so that you can redirect. Like this one, I can clearly see, uh, it talks about the dashboard. So if you want to get involved in this dashboard, so there isn't much here. Okay, so that's that bit. Then yeah, there are these. I yeah, think once we get once we get the structure uh, added to the docs, we can we can ping some of the maintainers. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. okay. Uh, then these are wiki pages. Yeah, I think there's a ton of outdated stuff here. Yeah, these are mostly uh, mostly outdated, I think. Are these stock photos here? Like, what are those photos? I don't know. It's somebody walking. Okay. Very important. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that we can't get rid of them completely because they, these things are kind of um, relevant. So this, like, this is all the code walkthroughs that we've done in, in past. So, I mean, the getting started page should actually link these these things as well. So I feel like there's a need. Uh, we should probably get rid of this adding anything new to uh, tracker.ceph.com wiki, uh, but we should probably redirect some of our uh, docs pages and some of our uh, website uh, links to point to the, these. Yeah, any new addition sense. should any new addition should probably only just go into the website and docs.ceph.com. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would be hard to to change. Like so many things point to the wiki. Right, and there are some yeah. people who still like to use the wiki. So I mean, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Just just like we should. Yeah. When we are trying to uh, streamline things, then we should not be having the like, three different things. Uh, go to the website and docs.steph.com. What is this all tracker or wiki? Wiki. Uh, and there is next uh, YouTube channels. These, I believe, should also go into the website. Yeah, they're definitely <clears throat> definitely linked. From the website somewhere. I, I I know the CDM. I saw the CDM link, but okay. So the CDM also uses the tracker, but 
it has individual recordings it doesn't have the entire youtube channel or something mm. so that's what i said i mean like people who want to use uh, use the wiki page for planning or like cdns or adding code walkthroughs that's fine but we have uh, the getting involved page just directly redirect to this guy Okay, I think this can probably, the YouTube channel can probably go everywhere. Uh, Uh, scattered across too many places. Some of it is outdated in the key requirements for submitting a PR are not easy to find. So maybe this is what needs to be addressed in our getting started page. Okay. And then for some of these topics, um, like how to create a PR, mm -hmm. I think there's also uh, like, I think there's like a specific YouTube video that Sage did about mm -hmm. that topic. And then there's also probably the documentation. So some of these topics I think are, we're, we're gonna have like a lot of content. Yeah. Okay, uh, so now this final thing is uh, feedback on other topics to improve. Contributing to documentation is neither simple nor fun at all. So I think what we should also do as a part of this is like um, the edit on GitHub link. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a there is a software that can record your uh, actions, your keyboard actions, right? So we can probably uh, create a small recording of using that uh, edit on GitHub uh, link to fix a documentation bug and add it directly to like getting involved in documentation. This is the easiest way to go about it. I see. Ooh. Uh, so like yeah, so like a screencast or something, right? Screencast, yeah, probably a screencast. I see. Who who made this Etherpad? I think it's Lens created it, and then a lot lot of people started adding stuff to it. I see. Yeah, maybe we should find out who wrote that because doc adding documentation uh, is yeah, it's definitely not simple, especially since it's in Git and everything like yeah. that's makes it hard but i've never heard of anybody saying documentation wasn't fun like <laughs> <laughs> i think that's we need to find out who wrote this and see <laughs> like you know what parts they don't find fun yep <laughs> and maybe they could give us examples of other places where the documentation is more fun like playing with documentation is more fun. <clears throat> yeah. 
One thing I think that we could work on that is legitimately very annoying with documentation in Ceph is the build process. Um, yeah. Like, uh, because it goes and builds like the Rados Python bindings, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, to ex I don't and I don't know what all it's doing. It's a bunch of automated API docs, I think. Um, it takes like 15 minutes to build the docs, or something ridiculous like that. Um, and that's a major roadblock. Even like like it's a it's 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 a serious roadblock. So I think. I think like that would be I think that would be a good idea. Maybe we can build maybe we can build like a I don't I mean I don't know what to do about it, but we need to work on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm um, just writing it down. That that's the whole point that um I'm going to after we finish this, I'm going to add this to this document this thing and we can figure out how we want or how we can divide work or who can work on uh, what but the thing is that this anyways this uh, this etherpad kind of shows that we are all over the place yeah. and we don't want to be there so uh, we should start uh, start streamlining things i'll look at the doc build time well we can divvy this up in a few minutes yeah um yeah okay what else do we have? Contributing link, contribution link on each page leads to the respective branch. When reading documentation for a certain release, you want to fix something directly, the PR will be rejected. I'm not sure what this means. Contribution. Um, it's just talking about the edit on GitHub thing. I think I think maybe what they mean is that if you're editing on not Nautilus, mm -hmm. then it'll create a PR for Nautilus. And right. then are they saying that stuff policy is like you need to go through master yeah. first? Okay. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's what they're referring to but that's the only thing that comes to mind mm -hmm. okay so maybe uh, the other thing to think about would be to for certain uh, things should we loosen that criteria that every block change should also be backported or can we just go and fix stock uh, uh, bugs directly in uh, named branches I mean, I my opinion is that, like, it's better to have an updated doc. Exactly than, right. Than it's it not going to, it's not going to break. It's not like it's going to break any functionality. Yeah. So let's see. And every and anybody that's reviewing this stuff can say like, can like say, please duplicate this for master or something if. If it's relevant. <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, Actually, I mean, I just don't, I just don't know. I don't, I actually don't know what's better in that case. Like, no, I mean, I don't see, uh, I mean, okay. I agree that there has to be strict review uh, yeah. as to, as to if that change also makes sense in master, then probably we should just say, okay, this change actually also makes sense in, uh, master so i mean it's not like you're saying close this pr it's like saying you have this pr well and good yeah. why don't you also create another pr against master 
right? It's not like we're rejecting things. It's like we're asking for more uh, contributions. That's always a plus. Yeah. Um. I guess I was kind of thinking about it more in terms of like, uh, you know, the delta, like the delta between, I guess, I mean, if my goal, if the goal is to make, like make the docs be up to date, mm -hmm. um, it feels like, they should target master simply for the simple fact that like it's more likely that the delta between two versions of the documentation is new things rather than different things so you're like constantly adding new features into Ceph, right and um so it's like the master is constantly a superset of the previous release and right. um and there's exceptions to that um but as long as people are diligent and say please also submit it to master i, I mean i agree we're fine it's more just like an edge case like if i had to choose one i'd choose pointed at master but i think ideally we could we would just assume pe people will Okay. Ask for... uh, isn't I okay? I, I'm not hundred percent sure about this. I haven't done it myself, but I think it, there's a way to change the target branch when the PR comes in as well. Possible, yeah. I have seen that happen on a PR, but I did not do it myself, so I'm not hundred percent sure. So if we can verify that, then probably if we see that there is a uh, PR against Nautilus, and it, uh, we think it is also relevant to master mm -hmm. we can retarget it ourselves and uh, i mean either mm -hmm. we ask them, we, we provide a, a reasoning as to why we did that and uh, follow the regular backport process or have the person also contribute to nautilus i don't know i don't think it's possible to do like use the same pr for two separate branches that's going to be like uh yeah impossible to do but i think there is a way to change the target uh, branch somehow yeah well, we can see how it goes. I mean, yeah. I think to just, yeah, I mean, like, just choose one and stick with it. And I think we'll be, yeah. it'll be fine. The the only, and I think you're right, like, we can't take one PR and turn it into two yeah. branches. Like, the only thing I can think of is that you you could use, like, a bot or something. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it the bot could, like, only could basically just only operate on PRs that touch the documents directory. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that bot would do, but maybe it would say, maybe it could like, uh, I, I don't know, maybe it could like try and merge the same thing yeah, it, into uh, yeah. the other branches. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, um, it can at least propose uh, a change yeah and the person reviewing those prs can uh can judge whether uh, the, that proposal makes sense or not accept yeah. or or not accept mm -hmm. but i think yeah that's that's definitely a second level thing but but we first need to everybody needs to be on the same page that can we actually say that it's okay to uh, not backport doc fixes can we just target it uh directly to name branches if there isn't isn't a way for us to um, change the target, uh, the the version against which the PR has been created. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think. There's one last thing, uh, having the same PR, adding only one sentence reviewed by three different persons 
all with different requests for changes makes people reconsider. <laughs> Uh, only one centenarian bags. I don't know. Is this like a personal experience for somebody? <laughs> probably. It sounds like it. Um, where is that? The uh, having a PR. Um. I think we can just. I mean. I think we can ignore it. I mean, we should not be like who someone should just be like making a decision on the PR, you know, like people can chime in all they want on reviews if they feel like it, I guess. But who we should just maybe like ha we can like make it a sort of goal to, to like maybe not but maybe not be like super strict with things and documentation or something. I don't know. Yeah. Also, I mean, the, the yeah. last one, the last bit that says adding a simple doc string was, I think, painful or something. I can't read it, hiding it yeah. from me. But, but I think it, it talks about the signed off by and all that stuff that got added, right? What is that? So there is this. Uh, so when you create a PR, it all it suggests that signed off, add a signed off by. You should have a oh, component yeah. name and a description. And if there is isn't a signed off by, <clears throat> it doesn't let you merge. And oh, that, has okay. lot, that has been a lot. That has been a challenge for a lot of uh, PRs that I see coming from first time contributors, uh, because uh, sometimes people just think they want when we ask for a signed off by they just edit their uh, comment on github yeah. and they add a signed off by but yeah. that doesn't help pass that check so um, um I, yeah. I, and that has been a challenge so I, it keeps coming back every time but we also want to sign off by how what is the most intuitive way or like maybe mm -hmm. we should have something again there uh, for people to easily understand our getting started should actually show what a signed off by is doing like a git commit minus dash dash sign off whatever or if yeah, you've I mean, not done yeah. it yeah if not done it you can just do the the amend and add like a signed off by manually and th that'll still pass the check uh yeah i mean we should definitely make we should definitely make sure the instructions for doing that are First time user friendly for sure. Yeah, it's I think that like having the signed off by be in the commit is probably important to people. Um, so like yeah, it is. It is yeah. So like not having it <clears throat> or so like having it pass the check just if it's in the comment is probably not sufficient. Um, I think that's just something where we're just going to have to like educate new users. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And so like, sure. I mean, changing the docs, like losing a losing a PR for a doc because a user got frustrated about doing some of these managerial things. Um, we can only, I think we can only really just like try and reduce the friction. Yep. I mean, it's way better than other places. Like some of the co some companies that have like GitHub repos, like make you sign, like physically sign like papers <laughs> before you're like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think uh, that bit. Uh, um, can possibly be. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, okay, I think that's possibly going to be addressed by educating people and having those introductory documents for people to read and understand what exactly is expected. Let's let's uh, add a to-do item maybe um, and see if we can tailor some of the um, instructions in GitHub like on a per path basis. You know, it's like we might want to say something slightly different if you're just submitting 
a PR for documentation. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we should we should also do that. So we'll do like a review the merge requirements dot text. Uh, okay, I added that note to the. Okay, to the yeah. <clears throat> okay. 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 Cool. So I think uh, action item wise, uh, we. I can I can share this back with the uh, with the group that suggested that we use uh, DocuBetter as a platform to come up with ways to streamline things and. As developers, we can start at least working on the Ceph, uh, the docs.ceph.com bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe have a meeting with uh, Mike uh, later sometime whenever he's available to add stuff to the website. Yeah. Cool. I am probably going to just. Yeah, I am going to add it probably somewhere here. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Say what? No, I said I didn't want to do that. <laughs> it's not letting me. It's open in another window, really? I don't think it's open in another window. It's open in my, on my, uh, is that what you're saying? Uh, no, I just, let me just open this and see. No, it's fine now. It just was, it just got confused. Okay, cool. I have added my stuff here and then we can think up again. Already. Weeks. Sounds All right. good. Um... I think this was pretty useful. I will let me just make sure I have this up before I before we, okay so I will I will take a look briefly at reducing the build times I mean uh, it's not it's not clear how well we're gonna be able to do there I mean there's a lot of docs and Sphinx is notoriously Flow, um, but uh, maybe there's some tricks, and certainly not compiling Rados or whatever <laughs> it does when it tries to build those Python findings uh, would help. Um, so I think there, yeah, I mean maybe we can split this a little bit where we've got like a fast build and a full build mm -hmm. kind of yeah. thing, and maybe like a Docker image. That caches a bunch of stuff. Hopefully. Yeah. So. Yeah. That that's definitely going to be useful. Um. Okay. Cool. I think all right. We are already fifteen minutes over time. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Have a good evening. Yeah. You, you too. All right. Talk to you later.